Hey Instagram, I'm going to get Facebook going and then we'll get started. Hi everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, Pinterest, a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, so today the plan is to um, talk a little bit about um, drumming lessons, lessons that you can use for a couple grades, probably skewing older, third, fourth, or fifth grade. Um, I have a large djembe-ish drum to even talk about and sort of demo a little bit on, um, and also we're going to talk about hand drums. Um, so um, a couple different options that you can take, and then I'm going to show you the resources I use and how you can deviate from those if you want to do whatever you want. Um, so really quickly, if you uh, see a resource or a book or something in this uh, video that you're interested in, I have a whole page on my blog dedicated to those links. You can just click on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org, and click the video tab um, for the Musical Mondays this current school year recap, or you can just click the link at whatever place you're watching or listening to this video, and there should be one at the bottom of the description. <clears throat> um, you can also find more ideas and questions and ways to connect. Um, there's a Facebook group, Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. Come join us, ask questions. Um, let's learn and be, um, you know, questioners and, and answerers in a community together on Facebook. Come and join us. Um, okay, so before I share some of the lesson ideas and things, I want to share some of the resources I might use with these drumming lessons. Um, again, this sort of skews a little bit older, but depending on how you use the resources, I, I love when I like share a resource and people are like, what grade do you use that with? It really depends. It depends on what your kids are used to. It depends on how you um, adapt the resource. It, it's There are a lot of variables, uh, but I'll tell you that all the lessons I'm sharing today are going to sort of skew older, third, fourth, fifth grade, could be second, could you know, depending on how you use the lesson, but it just depends on what it is you're doing. So a couple books that are really cool that I like using. Let me pull out here. Um, and probably you've heard of some of these, but maybe not all, so it's worth sharing. Um, I'm going to come back to this one, Hand, Hand, Fingers, Thumb. Um, this is by Al Perkins, um, and it's one that maybe folks have seen before, but um, totally worth talking about and sharing again, so I'll come back to that one. Um, one that I love using that um, I've used for a couple years, and it's more of like a focus for a lesson and less like I'm going to pull a rhythm out of this and, and use it, um, uh, but more of like a focus and idea for a lesson is called Drum Dream Girl. Probably many of you are familiar with this one. This is written by Margarita Engel and illustrated by Rafael Lopez. Um, it's just a really beautiful book in general. Like the illustrations are gorgeous. Um, it's by the same person who illustrated uh, Dancing Hands, which is the story of uh, Teresa Carreño, the, who's the, um, uh, a composer and performer who played for Abraham Lincoln in the White House. I'll just read a couple pages from this book. So this is Drum Dream Girl with a subtitle, How One Girl's Courage Changed Music. On an island of music, in a city of drum beats, the drum dream girl dreamed of pounding tall conga drums, tapping small bongo drums, and boom, boom, booming with long, loud sticks on big, round, silvery, moon-bright timbales. But everyone on the island of music in the city of drum beats believed that only boys should play drums. So the drum dream girl had to keep dreaming quiet, secret, drumbeat dreams. At outdoor cafes that looked like gardens, she heard drums played by men, but when she closed her eyes, she could also hear her own imaginary music. So it goes through, talks about um, how she really wants to drum, how she really wants to play. Um, and then, so it, it keeps going, and then she starts to um, play with her sisters, I think, if I'm remembering right. Yeah, because it's been a while since I read this one. Yeah, it, she plays with her sisters in this all-girl dance band, but eventually it's like, you can't play drums, you're a girl. Um, and then she keeps at it so much that, that her parents get her lessons, and then her teacher's like, no, actually, you are pretty good. And so it becomes this whole story about how she helps to... Um, she helps to change people's minds, honestly. Um, and so she played her drums at like an outdoor cafe, and that really led to... Um, 
led to this sort of revolution of ideas that, that girls should be able to play as well. And the cool thing in the back, it has this historical note that talks about um, this girl, uh, Milo Castro Zal Zaldariaga, um, who was Chinese, African, Cuban, um, so she had roots sort of all over, and she w helped to break this traditional taboo against female drummers in Cuba. Um, and that's in like in 1932. So it's a super cool story, beautifully written, but the, the, the words are just so poetically written that it's like a really great book to use um, to talk about like imagery and poetic imagery, but it also just draws you in. It's a great story and the illustrations are beautiful. It could be a great start to any lesson on drumming or even, you know, jump off and go play. I also really like that it talks about different kinds of drums. So like in the, what, the second page? Uh, pounding tall conga drums, tapping small bongo drums, and boom, boom, booming with long loud sticks, the bright timbales. So you could you could use this just like you could this could be your start of a lesson. Then you could talk about different kinds of drums, how they're classified if you wanted. You could show off drums. You could then say, well, we have this other drum called a tubano or whatever. It's however you want to take it. But it's a super cool book, Drum Dream Girl by Margarita Engel, written uh, illustrated by Rafael Lopez. Okay, cool. When I come back to that other one, um, another one that I like to use that to talk about um, a performer and then maybe use it to uh, sort of lead into a drum lesson would be this book, um, Tito Puente, Mambo King. This is by uh, Monica Brown, again, illustrated by Rafael Lopez. So the same illustrator as um, Drum Dream Girl. I'll just read a page or two out of this. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, clap your hands for Tito Puente. The Mambo King plays and sways as people dance the mambo, the rumba, and the cha-cha. And then in Spanish, damas y caballeros, niños y niñas, aplauden a Tito Puente. El rey de mam del mambo toca su música y se balancea mientras la audiencia baila y mambo, la rumba, y el cha-cha-cha. So it's both in English and Spanish. If you want to attempt the Spanish, great. If you want to just mentioned that it also comes in Spanish, also great, but it's nice to have that there too. Next page. Before he could walk, Tito was making music. He banged spoons and forks on pots and pans, windowsills and cans. That's a great segue if you want to use this book to talk about like, um, you know, stomp or you want to use it as a connection to that or you don't have to use actual drums or actual musical instruments to be a drummer. This, this would be a great way to do that. He was so loud his neighbors in Spanish Harlem said, get that boy some music lessons. And that's exactly what his mother did. Tito loved to dance too. Tap, tippy, tap, tip, tap, tap. Every year his church held a Stars of the Future contest. Little Tito danced and spun and tapped and drummed and Tito won. He was named King of the Stars. Over the years, Tito became king four times. So it sort of details Tito Puente's life, goes on to talk about how he, um, well, let's see if I can find that page I really like. Um, talks about how he got a Grammy, talks about how he um, grew and became a uh, musician who played with lots of different people. Ah, yes. Um, I love this one, this page. Tito's dream finally came true when he led his very own big band, the Tito Puente Orchestra. He wrote music and recorded more than 100 albums. He made music with Celia Cruz, Santana, and La Lupe. So I love this because we talk about Celia Cruz. We do a whole lesson on that and learn about her. And the same illustrator did a book about Celia Cruz that we use. So students know this exact picture because they've seen it in the, the Celia Cruz book. Um, and so then there's Tito Puente with Celia Cruz. They might know Santana. They might know La Lupe. But... Um, they for sure know Celia Cruz, and so that's a fun connection too. But anyway, just another great book that talks about Tito Puente, talks about his life. You could then play a video of Tito Puente actually performing, because we have some of those. So it'd be, um, a, it's another cool book that's like a great segue. Um, and then Tito Puente, which is also cool, you know, different from like Drum Dream Girl, where maybe she uses mallets, maybe she uses sticks, maybe she uses her hands. Tito's definitely using drumsticks in this. So that's another way if you're thinking like, well, you know, I want students to see in our class and we're playing with our hands a lot. I want them to also see what it's like to play with sticks or with mallets or whatever. This is a great connection too. Okay, two more. And then I'm going to get into some lesson sort of process and things. Drum City is another great book. This one's by Fia Guidon, um, illustrated by Vanessa Newton. I'll share just a couple pages of this one. Drum, drum, boy in the yard, drumming so hard. Calling all kids to come drum in the yard. Drum on some kettles and cans, here they come. 
They run to the beat of the drum. Sorry, I'm trying to get this so y'all can see the pictures and not, <laughs> not also fall over the process. Drum, bowls and buckets, cartons and cans, barrels and bins and pots and pans, mops on pails and rusty old rails, a rollicking, frolicking ruckus of rumbling drums. Drum, jump to the sound, dance all around, loud on the tubs and the tins that they found. March, calls the boy in the yard full of drums, hundreds and hundreds of drums. So this is a really great one if you want to have a lesson on like using found materials to create musical instruments, um, how you can keep a rhythm. It doesn't have to be on a drum. It can be with non-traditional things. This is a great book to help center one of those lessons because even though it keeps saying drum and you're drumming and you're drumming, it's not really on drums. It's on things that they find around pat, pots and pans and sticks and cans and trash cans, all sorts of things. So it's a super cool book for that. Um, it's also um, just, again, beautifully illustrated. I love that it, it brings all these sorts of people together. It talks about drums all around the world and how you can play and play hard, play soft, play happy or blue. You listen to me, I listen to you. Over the mountains and over the sea, drumming like you, drumming like me, together we drum. So it's, it, let's drum at the end. It's a really another cool book that sort of helps br like bring this idea of people together, uh, drumming different styles, drumming different ways, and, and it's a another great book, especially, like I said, if you want to talk about like non-traditional materials or non-traditional instruments, this is a great connection to that. Okay, and then last book. Um, this book... Paco and the Drum by Matthew Forsyth. I love this one uh, because it's sort of funny and snarky and weird humor and I just love it. Um, okay, so Paco and the Drum. The biggest mistake Paco's parents ever made was giving her a drum. They had made mistakes before, like the slingshot. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, there is a picture of um, Paco in the sling of the slingshot about to catapult herself across the yard uh and the llama and again this is a if you can't see it a huge picture of a llama inside the poor frog's house and the frog parents you can only see their feet sticking out from underneath the llama and the balloon again paco floating away but the drum was the biggest mistake we shouldn't have given her that drum said her father what? said her mother. The drum's too loud. I can't hear you. That drum was a big mistake, said her father. That sounds like a wonderful idea, said her mother, who still couldn't hear anything that he was saying. The next day her father said, Paco, why don't you take your drum outside for a little while? But don't make too much noise. We're just a little frog family that lives in a mushroom, and we don't like drawing attention to ourselves. Paco agreed, and she set out as quietly as she could. So obviously Paco does not stay quiet. She starts quiet. Um, it had just rained, and the forest was sparkling like an emerald. And it was very Too quiet. And if you, again, if you're listening to this as a podcast, there's a picture of Paco, like squinty eyed, looking out the page like it's too quiet. I just love this book. It's like my uh, thing is just so hilarious. Paco started tapping on her drum just to keep herself company, but some t something stirred behind her. So then she makes friends of the people who play. Uh, there's a raccoon playing a banjo and a rabbit playing a trumpet, and then a, a fox who just wants to dance along to the music. He doesn't really play anything, but just wants to be a part of the fun. And the fox eats the rabbit. <laughs> the thing is, it sort of continues on, and um, they more people make music and more come out, and then um, they go back towards Paco's house, and Paco's parents are, like, ready for Paco to come home for supper, and then she comes through louder and louder and louder, and um, she basically, they, the whole mob of musicians carry off the parents, and that's the end of the story. Um, my favorite part is that Paco's mother, like the, the mob of musicians come through and like, you know, spirit her away. But I love that she like doesn't even look up from her book because it says, what? Said her mother, who was just getting to the best part of her book. 
And, and like, she doesn't even care. She's like, this is great. I'm reading my book. It's fine. <laughs> I, I understand that. Anyway, um, so it's a super cool book about a little frog who loves to drum. And it's fun also then because you can, like, for my students, we read this. They think it's funny. They think it's funny. But then also I can talk about, like, we can talk about playing quiet, playing loud, when to play loud, when to play quiet. Paco, again, is using drumsticks or mallets. We can make a segue there. Um, we can talk about playing with others, playing an ensemble. You can play with other drums. You can play with non-drums. I mean, you again, with any of these books, you can use the drum as like a focus for the lesson and then take it anywhere you want. It doesn't have to stay. It, I feel like so often as music teachers, we say like, or we think like, oh, it's got to have like a little catchy rhyme or something that we have to say or a poem or a song or something that goes along with it. It doesn't. You can just use the book and then say like, okay, do you remember how Paco blah, 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 and then apply that knowledge? Or you could say like, you know what I noticed about Paco is playing with blah, 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 blah. And then you can make connections that way. It doesn't have to have, I mean, it's great if it has that like cool rhyme or whatever, but it doesn't have to. Um, and so this is like another cool book that would like be a great jumping off point. For a whole different set of lessons all sorts of different lessons okay so let's talk about where i get started so the lessons i'm going to share with you are things that i would do a third fourth or fifth grade i would do i am currently doing a third fourth or fifth grade um, but again you could skew these lessons younger older depending on what it is you wanted to do with your students and what it is you're focusing on so just i'm going to throw that little caveat in there so i'm going to start out with one of the lessons that i was doing with fifth graders um, so one of the things that when we, a, a couple of weeks ago, we came back from spring break, um, I wanted to talk about um, note values we haven't done in a long time, especially I wanted them to talk about um, ta di mi and ta di, which would be um, eighth note paired with 16th notes. Um, let me see if I can find a great example of that. Okay, so like what I really wanted them to focus on was 16th notes in sets of four, right? Okay, so like a set of four 16th notes. I wanted to talk about like an eighth note plus sixteenth notes, t ticka if you use that system, do data do data do, I don't know what I don't know what the fire robin way is, um, ticka t or taka d, um, which is the two sixteenths with an eighth note pair or just two eighth notes together or one quarter notes together. I want I wanted to focus on that first. So what I did in the lesson is, I put up a visual like this, on the whiteboard. And um, I actually, I used my iPad, I mirrored, but you could just put it on the whiteboard. You could just draw on the whiteboard, it doesn't really matter. The point was I wanted them to start coming up with words for each category. So we started out with a set of 16th notes. That was pretty easy, except I said, my only rule is you can't do food. So that became pretty interesting, actually. Let me see if I can pull up any of the answers that they came up with. Because I, I said no food because then I, I was gonna insist that they do food later. So I didn't want them to like have several words that like were the easy ones that they couldn't pick out on their own later if that makes sense so we did not do food to start with let me see if that okay yeah so i do have some of their answers um caterpillar dolly parton harry potter harry styles came right after harry potter um and then we had some words that like technically had four sounds but i didn't think they fit but we had to talk about why like south africa which is, yes, South Africa is four sounds, but it's South Africa or South Africa, or there's like an anacrusis there's a pickup where it just doesn't fit in really to the set of four sounds. So that we had a fun time talking about that. Let me see if the other class had any other good ones. Let's see. Um, like another one that they don't really fit, embarrassing. So like that one doesn't really fit because there's, like there's like an anacrusis to that word. Um, let's see. Australia, again, depending on how you say that or where you're from, Australia or Australia. I mean, uh, we, we talked about some of those and I was like, interesting, yes, four sound, does it really fit? So like we could have a conversation about that. <clears throat> so when we went to ta dimi, so eighth note to 16th notes, um, <clears throat> this became really interesting. Uh, maracas, again, uh, uh, Joe Mama, uh, Joe Biden, Obama. Let's see what's another one. Um, triangle. Um, when we did uh, Taka D, so like uh, uh, Ticka T, um, we had Donald Duck, BTS, Washington, 
hula hoop. I like that example because hula is two sounds. Hoop is one that was real easy. Uh, flame and hot for Cheetos. Um, xylophone. Let's see if there's another good example there. I allowed flame and hot because it, <laughs> it was not a food. It was a description of a food, so I allowed that. Also, that was a that was a really good answer. Like, good for that kid coming up with that. Um, saxophone, castanets, xylophone. Again, those are easy. Xylophone or uh, what was the other one they said? Saxophone because phone is one sound, and the saxo or the xylo or the met well not metallo, but like you know each of those. That's a great example. And then toddy uh, two eighth notes were easy. Chicken. Uh, Paisley was a student's name. Uh, rowboats. Let's see what's in the one they came up with. Music. Trumpet. Um, for ta words, cow, dog, me, you, uh, cat. Oh, and then they got on the cat, fat, sat, hat, rat. I, I was like, sorry, we have three of the rhyming. We have to cut it off there because they got to uh, fat, cat, and sat. And I was like, that's it. We're not going to continue to <laughs> the whole way. Um, the other class had air, hair, lair. <laughs> I was like, no. So anyway, um, but that's what we did the first time we sort of brainstormed. And then I, I printed off onto a page like this um, the five different categories. So takadimi, taadimi, takadi, uh, taadi, and ta. Uh, or tika tika, ti tika, tika ti, uh, ti ti, and ta. And I had them in small groups for the rest of the class period then come up with food specific words for each category. And that sort of took us to the end. At the end, if we had any extra time, I would like go by and I would say like, okay, circle your favorite one in each category and you'll get to share that out with the class if you have time. It just depends on how long it took us to brainstorm together before we moved on. So we did that. Then the next time when they came back, I said, okay, you already have your word bank. You came up with your word bank in your small group. Now what you need to do is I need you to take that word bank and I, in the next 12 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, I want you to come up with eight words together eight foods together and i want you to put them in a row and you're going to basically like so like let's say well let me pull out one of the examples because i pulled student examples so like let's say this class their tick ticka ticka was peanut butter <clears throat> their tea ticka was blueberry their ticka tea was chicken wing toddy was waffle and ta was ribs okay so then what they had to do was they had to come up with um uh a pattern of eight things together they had to have the rhythm and they had to have the food they had to have each thing represented at least once oh and this group did that great oh, i was worried they wouldn't and then um they at the end of the time they had to first of all take not come up with more answers don't add to your word bank take what you have from your word bank come up with your set of eight words together and then you have to be able to perform it for us at the end of class you have to say it and then you have to add body percussion so two times three you have to do your poem your word chain First time, just say it. The second time, you have to add body percussion. So this group did ribs, waffle, chocolate shake, blueberry. That was not even the word they circled. Why did they do it? Okay, so I'm going to switch to chicken wing. Ribs, waffle, chicken wing, blueberry, peanut butter, waffle, chicken wing, cheese. So then they had to do like rib, waffle, with chicken wing, blueberry, peanut butter, waffle, chicken, cheese. And what I really wanted them to do was as I would go around and I would like mention to kids as I saw them practicing, I would try and get them to figure out takadimi, tadimi, takadi, those 16th uh, words, words that are 16th related, are easier to pat than they are to clap or snap or stomp. So because of two hands, you can move, you know, alternating, da 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 takadimi, right? So we would go through and we sort of talk about some of those things in small groups. I didn't make it like a whole group lesson thing, but in the small groups, as they were workshopping what they wanted to do, I let them talk through and then figure out how you wanted to share that. So at the end of class, what they would do is each group would come up, they would perform their thing, they'd read through it once, and then they would perform it once for the class. Easy peasy. Let me see if I can find another good example. Oh, my first class, the first one I pulled, that's good. I honestly did not look ahead. Let's see. Okay, so then this is also fun because then I can go through and I can say like, okay, small group, say it for me. And then they would say, sugar and milk strawberry cream and they they wrote strawberry in here and they wrote it as a 16th like four 16th notes and i was like how many sounds does strawberry have and they're like ah oh. so it's it's fun for them to figure out like oh we gotta fix that um sugar milk strawberry cream chocolate oreo grande latte i remember this group they wanted to like have a starbucks order 
that's so hard. Okay, let's see. Um, watermelon, pineapple, glizzy, cheese. Okay, glizzy apparently is a hot dog. I looked it up. It, the online thing said it was not inappropriate, so <laughs> I'm like, um, okay. But they insisted on that. Also, dino nuggies. Why is that a thing? My students really like dino nuggies. I don't, is that, anyway. If you all could fill me in on why that's cool, that'd be cool. Um, so yeah, but so they went through and they had to make their they had to make their set of eight, right? And then by the end of class, they each group had to perform it. End of lesson. So I pulled I pulled those out. I saved them because then later when we get to drumming lessons, they're gonna perform those um, switching from body percussion to drumming. So what? I saved all of those things. Um, this is really actually a pretty fun exercise when they have to go through and figure out a food word for each, you know, for takadimi, for ta dimi, for takadi. Um, so it's fun to see them come up with things like that. And it's also really interesting that, especially when you have three sound words to say, is it one plus two or is it two plus one? So like, it's really to make easy to make that distinction with like compound words like blueberry is obviously one plus two. One sound for blue, two sounds for berry right? Blue berry, blue or chicken wing. Chicken is two, wing is one, right? Or chicken leg, chicken feet, whatever. You, again, you can go on forever on that feet. But um, it's easy for those compound words. When you get to other words, it becomes more tricky because then they have to decide where is the emphasis in the word, where, how do you say that word? And then a lot of times if you don't have those compound words, you, you end up with words with an anacrusis in it and so it just gets very tricky. So anyway, so, but this is a great input or a great like sort of start to this idea of, like drumming because then you can take that later. So what we would do is that we would then transition to like a drum lesson. So imagine this is a tubano. It's not a tubano. Um, so I don't know. Someone gave, if you're like, where's that drum from? I have no idea. I think this was like somebody went to Costa Rica and they brought it home. I don't know. It was, it was gifted to me by a friend, um, but it is very colorful. Just imagine it's a tubano, though. It's a boring old tubano. Just imagine. I just didn't want to bring a tubano home. I already had this here. Anyway, so what we would do is then uh, in the next lesson, sometimes we would bring back those foods. So like, um, you know, we could bring back, um, well, what are some of the food words? Uh, let me pull this actual example back. Rib, ribs, waffle, Chicken wing, blueberry, peanut butter, waffles, chicken, cheese. So maybe I'd say like, well, let's do waffles, ribs, waffles, ribs. So then I would let them sort of figure out how they wanted to play some of these things. This is my fifth grade class. We'd already talked about how to play the drum, where to play the drum, how to do that. Um, I am not world music drumming trained, so just know that. Um, but what I've learned over the years from workshops and all sorts of things that when you, when you teach kids to play tubanos, um, I always teach them three places to play. So in the middle, imagine this is the, the drum head for your tubano. In the middle, when you put your hand together, um, I learned that that's called bass. So when you get your fingers sort of all come together, like right in the middle, the middle of the drum. Um, you can also move your hand to the edge where your thumb can come off. I learned that was called tone. And that's sort of, you know, right here on, on the edge where you're getting, not straight into the middle, but sort of more on the edge. Again, with the kid's hand, it, it feels more natural. And then on the very, very edge with your just your fingertips on the rim, we call that, or I've learned that that's called a, a slap. And so bass is in the middle, tone on the side, slap. The one you use most often is tone, at least my kids, because of what it is you do. Uh, bass is used more for emphasis, and slap is just for sound effects or for very infrequently. So what my kids would do is then I would say like, okay, so I might give them an example from the class period before. So I might project up on the board, uh, ribs, waffle, chicken wing, blueberry, and I let them figure out how they want to play that. So rib, waffle, chicken wing, blueberry, blueberry. But, you know, they can, I, I let them work through a little bit and then we maybe figure out what's a little bit more, um, comfortable what more natural and so and i i've learned to st <laughs> stop asking kids what feels most natural because sometimes they'll choose the weirdest like back and forth and be like oh yeah it feels great mm, okay well let me <laughs> let me show you a different way to play that and like oh yeah i can do it all with my right pinky okay i'm glad that feels so natural to you let's try another way <laughs> So um, for a, for like new technique stuff, I've learned to sort of stop saying, well, what feels most natural and just show them sort of the more natural things that, that I would expect. And then what, again, it, I think it's also like, well, what feels most natural? Well, if you don't have any experience, anything you do, you're like, yeah, that feels right. 
but the more you do it, the more you learn to like what feels natural. So as we go, I might ask that question later, but to begin with, I don't ask that question. Anyway, so we, we start and we do some of those patterns and then usually I will come up with um, a set pattern that I've made. So here's an example. Oh, I don't want to give you that example. So um, <laughs> this is my fourth grade example. My fifth grade example would include the Tadini and the Takadi words. So like uh, pizza, pizza, blueberry pizza, peanut butter pizza, cheese, cheese, or whatever. You know, I would put that up there um, and then we would go through and then all together as a class, we would um, do one pattern together and we might play it together and play it in a couple different ways. Um, and project up, I would probably end up with, if I wanted to do extensions or things like that, I would probably give them a pattern that I created because if a kid, sometimes if you just pull a random one that kids created, it's all wonky and weird. But if you if you go through and choose like, ooh, this group did a really good, you know, you might find a great example or you may just want to create your own example. Totally up to you. I'm going to come back to this drum in just a second, but I wanted to share another thing I was doing with my fourth grade and sort of how it melts into this lesson in just a second. So my fourth graders, we actually took, um, so if any of you know this book, the Rhythmische Übung, which is a, um, a, a book that you probably get if you took ORF level one, um, or if you took ORF level one and you're now having like flashbacks of like, I don't want to see that book. It stresses me. It makes me think of homework. Don't let it stress you out. The cool thing about this book is that there are just so many examples in here of um, rhythms and patterns and just like well thought out, well taught patterns. Especially nice if you want to do like rhythmic canons, if you want to do uh, call and response, if you want to just have examples and things, this book is really good for that. It has all examples that include body percussion. And for my students, we do a lot of going from body percussion to um, instruments. So like this is a great jumping off point. So my fourth graders, um, we learned, let's see if I have it written down in here. Um, uh, we learned number 16 on page six, and I have done this one so many times um, in different workshops or levels or taught it myself or whatever. That You can come up with any sort of poem you want to go with it. Um, I did a poem that went along with it just sort of based on a book that I used. I learned it in level one. There are a lot of different ways you can do it. But um, what we did is that my students learned the poem and then we added body percussion. And so the pattern is bump, 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 bump. At the end, I changed it from my little poem at the end. So what what my students said was we learned it with text. I'm not going to give you my text because there are just a lot of different versions you could do. And I think the text that I yeah it. Like I even have notes in my in my RU. Learned it at SMU when I apprenticed. Learned it when I took my level one. I have my own text for a different thing. So there are all different kinds of text that you could add in. You could even just go back to food words. Peanut butter, peanut butter, cake. Peanut butter, peanut butter, cake. Peanut butter, peanut butter, chicken, waffle, cake. I don't know. I mean, whatever you want to do. Um, but you could add that in. So we learned it with a text. You could add it in the poem. You could just do food words. You could do you know, anything you want. Um, but what what we started out was just basic body percussion, especially just the padding part. Bum, 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 bum. And then in in the, the book itself, it it shows that you can do bum, 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 where one hand moves over. So like if you're padding on your knees, maybe your right hand pats your right knee your left hand pats your left knee, and then your right hand comes over to your left knee. So bum, 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 where one hand, I call it flying, where one hand is flying from one knee to the next. The other hand stays stationary and pats, but the one hand sort of flies and moves. Bum, 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 moves back and forth. So what we learned is we just learned separate hands staying on their own knee, and then we learned where one hand would one move from one knee to the next. Bum, 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 bum. And like I said, that's notated here in, in the text. And the way it does that is there are two lines for padding and where, where one comes up, that's when that hand moves over, if you can see that. So um, again, and the cool thing about this book is that that's all in there already for you. So like you just take, you could add your own words, you could add whatever, but the cool thing about it is like that pattern's in there. And this can be done in canon, so super cool. Anyway, we learn that in body percussion, we do that bum, 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 b
bum. And then we get out hand drums. So the first place we go is hand drums. And again, we teach sort of, a, I teach a little basic hand drum technique, how, um, you know, how you hold it. It's not exactly, per, or it's not exactly flat like a plate. It's not exactly straight like a wall. It's sort of a slanted like a, a slide. Although it's so slanted that if you took this slide, it'd be like, whoosh, you'd fall right off. But um, I teach that you can play down which is your you know, thumb and sort of heel of your hand on the bottom of the drum. Or you can play up, which is like your, um, your middle finger, tall man, and your ring finger sort of hitting here on the top of the drum. Yeah. And so either down or up, never really in the middle, because if you hit in the middle, it'll get that sort of slappy, splatty sound. It's not going to be as exciting. So what we do is we learn the poem, we learn the body percussion, great, we forget it for a minute when we get the hand drum because you, you know the kids get the hand drum in their hand they're just so excited. We might start with a little bit of echo, they echo back. We talk about you know going up and down, going back and forth, what that might look like. Eventually once we've learned a little bit of hand drum technique it's going to turn into us taking our hand and sort of recreating that a uh, crossover thing on the drum. So bum, 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 bum. So down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down. Two, three, four. Down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down. Again, and we're talking um, with my kids, I always talk about it's not about the force, it's about um, the sound. You really don't want your hand to be on the drum for very long. You know, that's not going to get you a good sound. You really want it to come up and off. Bum, bum, bum. Doesn't have to be loud. Bum, 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 bum. And then we even talk about when you're playing so hard that your, drum, your hand flies off the drum. There's a little bit of recoil it takes to get back in there. So, so if it, you really want to keep your hand close to the drum for these quick parts. Bum, 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 bum. And maybe on that last bum, maybe you you know pull your hand off for emphasis or for you know drama. Your your hand can come flying off. But when you're when you're playing quick notes, you have to keep your hand close. Just uh, you know to make it work. So anyway, so we take the poem, it started as body percussion, and then it's body percussion with that hand that flies over, that sort of crosses. Then we add into the, the hand drum. And at the end of, you know, that day, whatever, day two, day three, whatever you, however you structure this, um, my kids are, we're trying to get the down and up strokes to match sort of what we did with the body percussion. If it's not perfect, that's fine. What I really am going for is that I want them to know that there are different ways to play on the drum, sort of some good technique a little bit, because uh, this is starting for us for hand drum technique, and then also just to um, some good playing technique as far as like making good sounds, um, not just trying to wail on the drum, but like get a sort of a good sound. The next day when we come back, we take hand drums, we start, we do exactly what we did before, sort of a, um, it's sort of a practice run as a rehash. And then I say, um, okay, you're going to get into groups of two or three. Um, and uh, it'd be great if you could have in that group of two or three a different size of hand drum. If you can have, you know, maybe one that's a little bit bigger and one that's a little smaller, if possible. That'd be cool. And so I have, I have a lot of uh, multiple sizes of hand drums. If you just have one whole set of all the same size, that's cool. But the reason we do this is that we want a larger and a smaller drum in each group of three. So that means like two people can have the same drum, but one person has to have a different size again, if possible. So the reason we do this is then I have one kid stand holding their drum, tilting it toward another kid, the second kid holding a drum, tilting it toward that third kid, and the third kid gets um, two mallets. Now I use the like little rainbow mallets, the ones that come with a lollipop drum, um, because they are not hard. They're very soft. I have a whole set of them that, that kids, that there's enough that, you know, every third kid can have, um, balance like this and then what we do is we take that same pattern of the bump 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 the padding pattern bump 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 and we just move it to now hand drums with mallets bump 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 so if you're in a group of three one person is holding another person is holding another size and the third kid has mallets if you're in a group of two one kid is holding two drums out sort of tilted toward the player and then the player is playing and then you switch so my kids, we go back and forth. They love this. They love that there's a smaller and a larger drum. They love playing um, with the mallets. They think that it's hilarious and amazing. Um, and then we're, again, we're just taking that pattern from before, the one that we already learned is body percussion, and we're just transferring it to the drums. It is 
a big transfer because while the rhythm stays the same, you know, there's one kid who's like holding the drum, trying to figure out how to hold the drum. They're playing with mallets, trying to figure out where to play on the drum. Um, with these Remo brand drums, I usually say if you're going to play with mallets, try and hit the crown or get close to the crown. Because if they play right in the middle, again, that's going to be a different sound. So usually with a larger drum, I'll take them out and demo that. And you know, the different sounds you get. You know, if you play the same uh, speed and the same... Um, force all over the drum but then you can hear differences in the timbre because of where you're playing so i sort of use that to demo where kids are playing but then this is a big ask is getting them to play with mallets on a hand drum while other kids hold and then switch so it's it's a pretty fun thing by the end of the lesson we speed up and it's very exciting and um, a great time again all just starting with a little poem from this book the are you the rhythmische übung um, which is a great book to have um, you could do the one that I did, which is number 16 on page 6. You could. Use, there are so many others, though. I mean, on, on this page alone, there are one, two, three, four, five, seven examples you could pull and use. You could come up with a cool poem. You could just use food words. You could use whatever you want. I mean, totally up to you. Okay, so after that lesson, then we come back, and then my fourth graders, we get out the, the big drums, the tubanos. We talk about how to play. We do um, a whole lesson on playing with them that day where we, um, again, maybe take food-inspired words. So my students, we would take um, top, was fourth graders, we would take um, 16th note sets, so takadimi or tikka tikka, um, and eighth notes and quarter notes, and we do little patterns together. Maybe, again, I would have them come up with foods that related or whatever, um, and then we'd just play. And so... Um, we just did the hand drum, so you might you could even take that same less the bump 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 and put it on this drum. So if I were going to do that same lesson from before, that bump 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 bump, I might figure out where can I play that's like down versus up because you can't really play down and up on a tubana, but you could do the bass in the middle, the tone on the side. If you figure out how you're going to do that. Um, and again, I let kids sort of figure that out a little bit, try it out on their own, and then we sort of work through together what they've discovered, or I, I give them a little guidance so that by the time we, we're done, we have. And you can talk then about where does the accent go, where does the emphasis go. Like that's a, an avenue you can take once you're doing this lesson um, if you want. So we do a, a, like a day of that, a day of playing. Um, usually to keep things fresh, um, I have, you know, four rows of kids and, you know, each kid, I'm lucky enough to have two bonos for every kid. I know not every school has that. We're very lucky to have that. So we have different um, sizes in, in each row. Um, I bought a set of stools from Ikea that were really inexpensive, but are like perfect for sitting in the two bonos. I have not had one break yet. I, I know it's coming, but I haven't had one break yet, but they're very inexpensive and they'd be easy to replace. Um, also, there's an Ikea on my drive home. So like if I had, if I, I when I bought, when the PTA bought us all these tools, I filled up the back of my Hyundai Tucson with all these tools and I was able to get them um, to school pretty easily. So uh, anyway, Ikea stools were great and they fit the to two bonos just perfectly. So again, sorry, backtrack. So I have four rows of students <clears throat> and each row, you know, there might be a, a large drum, a small drum, uh, whatever in each row. The tubanos come in three sizes if you have the, the tunable version. Um, and what I did to sort of help students see those differences <clears throat> between the small, medium, large, I think it's 10 inch, 12 inch, and 14 inch, I think. Um, I took a little bit of floor tape or, or whatever kind of tape you want. And on the very, very bottom of the drum, I put one little strip um, of tape on each drum. So for the small drums, I put a yellow strip. For the medium drums, I put a blue strip. For the big drums, I put a purple strip so that like as they're going to grab drums, they can see like, do I want the small, medium or large? It doesn't really matter to me, but I want a, a, like sort of a mix. But then I know once kids sit down in their rows, I know if they're sitting, you know, if there's a whole row of large drums or whatever, I know that because I can just visually like check and see like, oh, that's all purple. That's the biggest one. So it's nice to just have that. Um, like I said, I use tape that's called floor tape it's like you can get it from a pe catalog um but it's just um easy to use and then when you take it off it doesn't leave a residue um you can get some from your pe teacher you can buy it from amazon or from the magazines or whatever you know from the catalogs but um, i like using that because it's bright it comes off without a residue and it's easy to use 
Anyway, so the kids are sitting in their rows. I know sort of what drums they have to keep the lesson fresh. We do the lesson and then I have them rotate forward a row. So they move up. You could have them move over, move whatever, but they move so that then they get a different size drum or a different perspective in the room or something. Um, I could move them side to side, but I like moving them up or back in the room because then it's like, you know, if they move up, then the front row goes all the way to the back. And that rotation then means like, I'm not just moving, you know, the back row kids aren't staying the back row kids the whole time. Like I'm rotating through the room. So you may end up being the front row or whatever. And I, I find that that for, for classroom management, but also for their own, you know, hearing timbres in the room or whatever, it's a, it's great to rotate forward just so they get something a little bit different. Okay. So, um, my fourth graders or fifth graders are doing a very similar lesson for this next part. So I'll just sort of share what I did with my fourth graders. I think is the example I brought today. So we did a couple drumming lessons. We did hand drums. We did held hand drums with mallets. We did tubanos. Um, this is a, over the course of a couple different lessons. Um, and then I gave them this sample that I created. Pizza, pizza, peanut butter, pizza, peanut butter, peanut butter, pizza, cheese. This is projected up on the whiteboard when they when they you know get started with the lesson. We read it first. Pizza, pizza, peanut butter, pizza, peanut butter, peanut butter, pizza, cheese. Okay, so then um, I say try with body percussion. Pizza, pizza, peanut butter, pizza, peanut butter, peanut butter, pizza, cheese. You know, and with padding probably and not necessarily clapping or snapping, but you could add that in. Pizza, pizza, peanut butter, pizza, peanut butter, peanut butter, pizza, cheese. You could do that if you wanted. It's just up to you. So we, we just learn it once. I just want them to like sort of memorize that pattern, sort of get it into their head. And it's something that I came up with. <clears throat> I came up with, no, it's just something I wrote down in order, but I, I didn't want to like do it in the moment because I wanted to have a preset these specific rhythms for a specific reason. So I just, you know, before kids came in, it's not just I wrote it on the board on the fly. I actually stopped and thought before the lesson started what I wanted them to do. So then we, we would go and I said, okay, you're going to go get a tubano like last time, but this time don't get a stool, just the tubano. So they go, they get their tubano, they bring it back, sitting on our knees, then we transfer the, you know, so they're so they're on their knees with the drum right in front of them. Um, and we do the, the poem um, on the tubano. And they can figure out on the side, in the middle, however they want to play. Bum, 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 ba da 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 boom, boom, ba da da ba da ba da ba boom, 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 whatever. I don't care. But it's basically like, okay, we took the poem, we learned it with words, we learned it with body percussion. Now let's just try it with drums real quick. So we do that. And again, we're in our scatter formation around the room. And then I say, okay, now the reason you didn't have your stool is because we're not going to stay here. We're going to move. So take your drum and make a class-sized circle. So as a, as a class, we make a circle shape. Um, they take their drum with them, which now they have to decide, did they make the right choice? Choosing the big drum, choosing the small drum. I don't know, you know, because they're slapping around the room. So they take their drum, we make a big circle together. And that's when I say, you know, two bottles are really cool because you can play them with your hands or you can use mallets. Now, again, for tonight, I just have my rainbow mallets at home. I don't have other mallets at home, but you could pull um, soft yarn mallets. You could pull felt mallets. You could pull whatever kind of mallets you want from, you know, xylophones or whatever. Um, I pull either from my xylophones or pull old yarn mallets or whatever I have available and each kid gets a pair. So then what I say is, okay, we're going to try the same thing and we're in our big circle. Can you just now, instead of playing with your hands, play with the mallets? So we try it. Pizza, pizza, peanut butter. So then we talk about, again, where to play. Um, so at school, I have those two bonos, right? And so again, I say, if you're going to play, try and play on the crown, on the crown of the Remo, right, of the, the brand name. That, and I also say, like, you don't have to turn your drum. Imagine there's like a ring of those logos around the outside edge. Where would that be? If it were over here, it'd be right here. If it were over here, it'd be right here. It would never be in the middle. We're not playing in the middle. And again, with the two bonos, I do that thing where I like sort of illustrate the difference in sound of where you're playing, you know, it's going to make a different sound. Okay, so we try the pattern again. Pizza, pizza, peanut butter, pizza, peanut butter, peanut butter, pizza, cheese. Okay, now watch, I'm going to try something, one thing different. Just watch me, everyone, and we're in our big circle again. Pizza, pizza, peanut butter, pizza, peanut butter, peanut butter, pizza, cheese. And I lean over and I tap the kid on the right, I tip, tap their drum on the word cheese. Ooh, it's so exciting. You get to play somebody else's drum Ooh, while they're playing. How is it? So, uh, so again, it's just the last word. 
So we play everything on our own drum. Ba da da ba da ba da. Pizza, cheese. We play the other person's drum. Do that two or three times. Um, I also, it, at this point, I have a little clicker in my hand and I say, like, here's the pattern it means to stop. Let's just keep going through until you hear the stop pattern. So this is like teaching them that before we get too far in the lesson. Um, so I have just like a bump, but you know, maybe I'm just clicking the steady beat. Bump, 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 bump. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Um, I actually have one of the clickers I use. There's a, a clicker that I really like. Um, I just saw it in a West Music catalog. Again, I am not world music drumming trained. I wish I were, but I'm not. Um, and I know that a lot of people uh, learn about this in world music drumming. It's called a free chua. And a free chua, some people call it um, like a thumb bell. Some people call it an African castanet. It just sort of hooks on your, th on your uh, finger here, or it can hook like this but it's easy to just click. So when I'm clicking the steady beat, it's an easy sound to hear. It sort of sounds like a metronome, but it's not too abrasive. It's not like a, a cowbell where I have to use two hands to do it. I can do it with just one hand. So when I'm doing it, I'm just clicking the steady beat. And then when I want them to stop, or, or just whatever, some sort of variation to that. Um, this is, again, it's called a Frichiwa. It's spelled F-I-R-I-K-Y-I-W-A. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'll put a link. I did a whole blog post on it. I'll put a link to that on the links page. Okay, so um, so they're playing. They're doing that um, with the pattern. And we just played a couple times through, again, on that last beat, pizza, cheese. On the cheese, they're playing somebody else's drum. Well, let's add something else. So here's our here's our poem again. Pizza, pizza, peanut butter, pizza, peanut butter, peanut butter, pizza, cheese. This time on that last pizza the, on the top line. Pizza, pizza, peanut butter, pizza. For that one, it depends on the class. Sometimes I'll have them play on their left. So pizza, pizza, peanut butter, left person. Right? Or what I've also been doing, I'm trying out is pizza, pizza, peanut butter, pizza. Like a rim shot on the far edge of the drum where you just use the, the stick of your mallet to, to play on the rim. Pizza, pizza, peanut butter, pizza, peanut butter, peanut butter, pizza, cheese. Again, playing on the right. So we go through, we do it, fun, great, do it two or three times. Um, and I say, okay, I'm gonna change one thing. Pizza, pizza, peanut butter, pizza, peanut butter, peanut butter, pizza, cheese. And I play to the kid on the right and I go, great, now this is my drum. So when you play that cheese, you play on that kid on the right, and you're going to play on what is going to become your new drum. So now we're going to be rotating on the circle as we go. That last beat is going to be the one where you switch over to your new drum. Peanut butter, peanut butter, pizza, switch, and play on your new drum. Then play again. And so we, we have fun with that. We rotate with that. That's a super great time. If we have time in the lesson, I say, okay, Great, grab your tubano and step out. So we, we step out, we cause a little bit of room, more space in between the drums, so it's harder to play on somebody else's drum. I say, but that's okay, because now watch this. So uh, what I do is um, pizza, 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 pizza. Instead of switching to the drum, I switch from the outside to the inside. So you move around the edge of your drum. That's hilarious, they think that's super fun. So then we're switching. And then what we'd sometimes do is we'll do a circle where it'll be one person in, the next person out, the next person in, the next person out. And so then you can you know switch around to the other side of your drum or you can add the rotation back in where anybody who's on the inside moves to their right, anybody who's on the outside moves to their left or whatever, or sorry, moves to their right. And so then you're all rotating. It You can play forever and ever with this. Um, it's a super easy, like once, once you're like, you have your class there and you're like, hmm, what else, what else can we do? Kids will come up with ideas. You will come up with ideas. You can change the pattern if you want. You can add more interactive stuff. Pizza, pizza, peanut butter, pizza, peanut butter, peanut butter, pizza, cheese. You can click your mouths together. I mean, like once you get started, there are a thousand places you can go. But I, I usually start with a poem or, or a little word chain that I can then riff off of and do fun things with. With my fifth graders, this I mentioned before, it's the same sort of thing, only instead of just eighth notes and sixteenth notes, there'll be eighth and sixteenth note combos in there. So like top, uh, T, 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 ticka, T, ticka, ticka, T, ticka, T, ticka, 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 ta, or whatever. I don't use that language. So ta, di, ta, di, ta, di, mi, ta. Takadi, 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 mi ta, right? Or whatever sort of patterns you want in there. But once you get started, then you can go 
forever and ever in this. With you can speed up the tempo. You can talk about not playing so loud. You could that's a callback to Paco and the drum. You could talk about um, you know you could have some kids play with mallets and some kids not. I mean there are just so many variations of this, but the fun is in getting like a start and then chasing one of those variations, trying something different. Kids are like, what if we switch this other way? Okay, let's try it. One of my classes, so if you imagine there's like a circle of kids. So like this is the circle and each one has a drum. And there's one on the outside, one on the inside, one on the outside, inside. They said, let's all rotate, but let's all rotate counterclockwise. So, uh, and when they did, they said, okay, and when you rotate counterclockwise, I kept, I say counterclockwise because they don't, that's not a term they like to use. Anyway, when they would rotate, you'd either rotate from the outside to the inside on the next drum. So you not only rotate outside to inside, you also rotate to the next drum. It's sort of hard to imagine. So like if you're here on the outside, then you'd rotate in here on the inside, then you rotate out on the outside, then you rotate in on the inside. So you're moving spots around the circle and you're moving in to out. I mean, this is like, like endless variety for what you can do. Um, you don't have to use the drumsticks, but it's fun and it's different, especially... Uh, if you're thinking like fourth or fifth graders, their height, it's sort of perfect for playing with drumsticks on tubanos. They'd have to lean down if they're going to play with their hands. So the, the drumsticks, or they're not drumsticks, I keep saying that. The mallets make it pretty easy. Um, like I said, I don't use these rainbow mallets when I'm doing this. The tubanos have a really um, durable drum head. Um, and so we use like xylophone mallets or we use yarn mallets. We use other things. I've even used like the American drum, like the rubber ones, and those do okay. If you use something like this, which is more of like, I think I, this comes with my temple block. This is very, very hard. I don't think that would be very good for the drum. But if you have some sort of rubber mallet or soft yarn or something like that, that should be pretty easy to use. Anyway, if you have the drums, if you have the options, it's so much fun to do um, these drumming lessons or, or inspired lessons. Um, another book that I didn't get to tonight, Hand, Hand, Fingers, Thumb. This is one with like a built-in poem. Um, hand, hand, fingers, thumb, one thumb, one thumb, drumming on a drum. One hand, two hands, drumming on a drum. Dum, diddy, dum, diddy, dum, dum, dum. That keeps coming back. That's really easy to say like, okay, you're going to play that part. Or after I say it, you play it. Or what? I mean, this is another book that's really rhythmic. So if you want one of those books where you can like pull out the rhythm or pull out the idea, this is a great one for that. Okay, that was a, a lot of drumming stuff in a short amount of time. But I, I hope that you didn't see me like rushing through all these lessons be like, wow, he gets through a lot in a day. No, it's like we build and we build and we build. So these lessons for my fourth and fifth graders are like two or three lessons in a row so that like we can get started with one and then move on to the next and move on to the next. You just build that technique and you build in starting with simplified rhythms to more difficult rhythms. The switching and rotating around the circle, we do not start with that. I mean, if you remember when I talked about that lesson, we start with body percussion. We start with the words. Then we add in the drums. Then we add in the circle. Then, you know, it's like this, then this, then this, then this. And that's just scaffolding. But it's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. But like I said, get, get a poem or get a thing or get started and then just see where that takes you. Um, what's even more fun, if you don't have enough drums for everyone, maybe one kid gets a tubano and the next kid gets a maraca or the next kid gets a wood block or whatever. Like, how are you going to add that in do they play something different do they play the same thing on just a different instrument you know like how are you gonna how are you gonna take that um and add that in it's so much fun to explore totally worth it i remember when i first was doing these lessons i was like i am a little terrified of what this is and then the the more you do it the more fun kids have the more confident they are once they can handle the technique of how to play where to play then you can sort of run and do whatever you want with it Okay, this is week 13. There are only two more Musical Mondays this semester. Um, so if you have um, ideas or thoughts about, hey, we'd love to chat about this or what what about this other thing, please send me an email. My email is makemomentsmatter at gmail.com or leave a comment on one of these videos. Um, also, starting tomorrow, there's a Teachers Pay Teachers sale. I can't believe I forgot to say that at the beginning of the, the video, but there is. So uh, come back for that. There are a lot of cool resources that are going to be on sale. All my stores going to be 25% off. Um, and check my Facebook page tonight for a gift card giveaway. Woohoo! Anyway, okay, Monday night. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for coming. I hope you had a great night, and I'll see you all next week. Bye, everyone.